Well, my distinguished counterparts chose to use the stage to just to blame Russia, but by all we just have heard, uh, it's clear that exactly the political uh, goal is behind the desire to associate with uh, Western Union, West Europe, European Union, because it's clear from what you gentlemen just uh, have said that uh, you want uh, to draw EU uh, to your fight against or your quarrel, your dispute uh, against Russia, whom you blame to, to now in all uh, mortal sins. Uh, I will not uh, uh, contest. Uh, uh, if there were a regular Russian army there, the picture, uh, photos of that from the space, etc., would be all over European newspapers. It's not. Uh, of course, and uh, can I just show you a, f a few sociological diagrams just to show you, you don't need to uh, just to, to, to mind the colors. It's before Maidan. One is um, uh, uh, um, uh, 10 and the other is just uh, the first Orange Revolution. It's uh, the year uh, 04. Look how vote the parts of Ukraine without any Russian influence or invasion. So these are two parts who look different at the world. And by, of course, even by what you have just gentlemen said, you want to reinforce this uh, 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 one part, uh, one part of um, minds of, of Ukrainians by the uh, support of um, uh, EU. So it's purely political against the other. Will it bring harmony to, the, to Europe in general? Will it bring harmony to Ukraine? Because it's clear, I think everybody um, must agree that the main goal of any big geopolitical act should be some noble goal to harmonize something, to uh, bring peace, to bring profit in, 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 in economics, in, in social life, etc. Will it bring uh, profit for the Ukraine? Believe me, although I am a supporter of our politics, um, the uh, present, current um, state of psychological war between Ukraine and Russia is a permanent burning wound in my heart since the graves of my ancestors lie in Ukraine. My father, academician Narochnitsky, was born in Chernigov and graduated from Kyiv University. He could deliver a lecture in Ukrainian. My grandfather, who died before revolution, was director of People's College in, in Chernigov and his father, my grand grandfather, was an Orthodox priest in Chernigov region. So for me, it's a tragedy, all this. So, but uh, just not because of um, I'm interested that instead of joining uh, European Union, even in the form of association, Ukraine will return to good relations and associations with Eurasia. I'm not naive, I'm an expert in international relations. The relations between Russia and Ukraine deteriorated, have deteriorated so much now that there is no hope that they uh, just, uh, in one turn, they will uh, improve. So it's not egoistic um, in terms of Russian interest that I'm just expressing my doubts. It's my doubts, it's not my, uh, I have no right to advise either you or the Ukrainians how to behave. But, because but if I understand you correctly, your main argument is that based on this picture, one half red, the other half uh, 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 blue, that the Ukraine is a divided country it's, and think, it's not uh, one the, the, unified state which can make... Well, <coughs> it certainly uh, started as a unified state. And the only condition uh, to uh, keep it that way and enjoy God's gift in such a territory, such economy, such science, such high technological industry, the only republic of Soviet Union that uh, left with um, industrial uh, production of high quality, uh, sharing with uh, Russian enterprises the cosmic uh, production for, co for space, uh, etc., etc. So it's all now that who needs that in uh, 
European Union, well, especially okay. that European Union is very egotistic and it's very uh, colonialist. You know that it doesn't allow uh, the members <laughs> to export more outside the EU than they do in EU. Who needs what Ukraine pr produces now? I mean, what it rests from uh, oh, but it, in, in, in European, nothing. So that means that hundreds and hundreds thousands of uh, uh, jobless people who would lose because their, their jobs, because it will be deindustrialization of Ukraine, that means demodernization because of that. They will rush, of course, to European Union to seek a better fortune. Are you ready for that? Listen, I, in the beginning, I felt slightly confused telling the Dutch what to think about themselves, but when I see the Dutch can tell the Ukrainians, I feel very much free. Uh, because I have, I have a problem with the referendum. I have a real problem with the referendum, which has nothing to do basically with the Russian-Ukrainian story. And here is where my problem goes. I very much agree with you that there is a major gap between the publics and the elites. And I do believe that the referendum is a genuine democratic instrument. In order for it to work, they should have consequences for people. Because what I'm afraid of this referendum is three things. Do you remember how the Dutch government and Dutch public has been unhappy with the Greeks in 2011, wanted to have a referendum on the reforms, saying basically you cannot keep Euro the hostage of the Greek domestic politics? Why do you believe that you can keep the common foreign policy of the EU the hostage of the Dutch domestic politics? And for me, this is a major issue, because it's about Europe. This is, I very much understand that you can have arguments for or against, but here is what I'm afraid. I do believe, for example, that the British referendum is totally legitimate. You have two positions, people are going to decide, and on the basis of this decision, some important things are going to change in the life of the Brits. What is going to change in the life of the Dutchman if they're going to vote no? Nothing. And this is my problem with the referendum. It's very much kind of a low cost, just a tactical instrument to paralyze the European Union. And with respect to Ukraine, this is... <laughs> yeah. and, and, this is... and do you know where is the problem with Ukraine? Because of course everybody... By the way, for me, Ukraine is one of those countries for which you either know everything or you know nothing. So I'm not going basically to make any statements about this. But here is my story. You are sending a very strong message to everybody. Europe is closed. We don't want to be nice to people anymore. From this point of view, the signal of the referendum is not very different from the Danish people saying you should take basically the values of the uh, uh, refugees, not because we want them, but they should know that they are not welcomed. But basically killing the hope of people, even if it's a wrong hope, it's not a crime, it is a sin. Because you're saying that if you're going to get them, they'll go and basically leave their country. What is the message that we're telling the Ukrainians? When nobody is going to leave Ukraine aside. We are helping Ukraine since 2004. We have good neighborhood policy in Europe. We try and take care and help you fight corruption. There are programs with technical assistance, financial assistance, twinning projects. We do a lot. We spend money in Ukraine helping NGOs fighting corruption, helping NGOs bringing more rights to the gay community, doing all sorts of things. The Dutch have programs, many programs in Ukraine that cost us a lot of money. And I support that. And I think we should keep on doing that. And we don't need the treaty. Already it was said that in the past 24 months, many laws have been passed in Ukraine without this treaty. So already Ukraine is reforming. And I was happy to meet many Ukrainians who said that even if the Dutch say no to this treaty, even if the Dutch say no, we will keep reforming this country because it is in our own interest. And that gives me hope. Because it is yeah. an intrinsic, it just one, intrinsic agree, wish, agree. wish of the people of Ukraine yeah, to, to reform the country yeah. and also to reform the political system that Mr. Klimkin comes from and represents. Uh, just uh, just, just two sentences. Because, uh, first of all, I do believe you are going to be right if the Dutch people were not going to have an opportunity to have a referendum if the EU should basically get Ukraine in. But you have this option. Uh, Ukraine, they were, I don't believe it's a legitimate question. Should Ukraine be a member of the European Union? It's not something obvious. 
But I do believe that you have, and you are going to have all of the member states, this option if this question is going to come. We are not discussing this. Do you know what is the message that basically you are sending the world? The message is, if you want to change your life, it's not enough to change your government. Better change your country. And then when people start and basically said that the only way to change is to go to Canada or EU, EU or US, we should know that this is the message that we are sending them. And from this point of view, of course, to be honest, I'm not fascinated by the performance of the Ukrainian government. I can imagine a better government. Uh, and it's not about how well or bad they're doing. It's about the message. Do you want in the beginning of a political process to tell people, listen, we are in the business of keeping you out. This is for me the Ivan, story. Ivan, the message that you are advocating is extremely dangerous. If you say that holding a referendum, which is the purest form of democratic expression, is holding, <laughs> is holding the European Union hostage, then you are putting the institutional interests of the European Union above popular will and popular no, sovereignty. No. You're putting and that will kill above, the project. No, no, above listen, if it was an all-Europe referendum, it's one thing. We've, no, it, it, that we I'm not against that, that but could be a, that's a, not at hand. Exactly. Listen, I just, I was, uh, years ago I read a science fiction short story, Romanian one. By the way, having Bulgarians and Romanians on the stage, I know is not helping the Ukrainian cause. Uh, but, <laughs> definitely not, definitely yeah, not. But going out of this, but the story was the following. Basically, they, they come with the political system in which when they elect a president, they were putting a bomb in his body. And everybody has this on his phone, the possibility after the president takes a decision to vote yes or no. And if three times the no are more than yes, he explodes. The only problem, it's a very democratic, but I'm not going to call this regime a democracy. And by the way, I don't know anybody even the Socialist Party spokesperson, running on an elections like this. Uh, <laughs> so from this point of view, I do believe that the referendum is a very important instrument, but this is the nuclear weapon of a democracy.